we've passed over 100 laws in the last 10 years. It's unprecedented. Wow. You don't do that, right? You just don't pass laws after laws. They've passed 1,000 laws to criminalize us. We've passed right. 100 to decriminalize and to ensure that people can get back to true safety. What we did was we went to bat, expunged 75% of people's records in California. So if you have a record and you did not go to prison, which is like 6 million people, is right. the, is literally the largest pot of people your record is automatically expunged. Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy. Beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies yep. and gentlemen. All righty now. A as you see, we got a, a room full of people. We're not going to swing the cameras around, but it's like it's time to learn. We do a lot in the neighborhood, man, where we have great interviews. But there's also times where you got to sit back and you got to say, you know what, man? There is something that we want to teach the people about. And this is low-hanging fruit. Sometimes we don't even know that these things are available to us. So we got Jay Jordan in the neighborhood, man. Time done. Welcome to the neighborhood, Jay Jordan. The Alliance for Safety and Justice. First off, what is time? First off, thank, welcome to the neighborhood, bro. Thanks for having me. Thanks man, having my me. pleasure, man. What is time done? So time done is the largest and fastest growing movement a network of individuals living with a past record, mm -hmm. right? So if you've ever been arrested or incarcerated, what ends up happening is you get out and there's a point where there we call re-entry. It's like one to three years, you're on probation or parole, you're going to see somebody, you're seeing other people in that context of having a record. But then after that, it's a wrap. Mm -hmm. You go on, live with your life, you really don't know people got records unless you ask them, right? Or right. unless you see them struggling. There's 70 to 100 million people in America with the record. Mm -hmm. That's twice the size of Canada, right? Jesus Christ. It's a lot of people. And so what Time Done does is we organize people with records to not only support them economically, build economic stability, but remove barriers to pathway, to remove barriers to economic stability, build pathways to um, success. So and like, when you say remove barriers, what kind of barriers are we talking about? Let's get into it. Let's get yeah, into man. it. All right, let's get into it. So about 40 years ago, America started to invest in prisons and jails, mm -hmm. right? In it's a, a big way, in a big way. Mm -hmm. And it is a government business, right? So they invested $11.5 trillion. That's more than what we spent in Iraq and right. Afghanistan. Got to get it back. 100%. $11.5 trillion. To date, right now, it is the largest employer in the world, only second to the U.S. Department of Defense. It goes the U.S. Department of Defense the U.S. justice system, Walmart, and then oh the Chinese like um, public safety department, right? So this is a big conglomerate. It spends $300 billion every single year, and it has associations in California. It's the CCPOA, which Big U told me that was founded in eight, uh, 1984 in California. And shout out to Big U as well, man. Welcome to the neighborhood, Big U. Thank you. My brother, my brother. And so it has these associations that protect it. They have high-priced lobbyists, and they maintain mm -hmm. the bottom line. So what, Calif what, what the U.S. government did was, hey, we need to begin to stabilize black and brown communities after the civil rights, right? So instead of giving us economic stability, mm. they gave us safety. And safety right. in terms of a police state. Police stations, substations were not in the hood until they started to invest in substations in the hood, substations in the projects, building up prison systems all around the country. Again, 40 years of building the prison and police state in America. And then they had to not only build the police state, the infrastructure, they had to implement, um, write the laws to criminalize certain things so people can then feel the infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so when people say, what is a crime? Oh, that's a crime. That's a crime. Things weren't always crimes. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Jaywalking wasn't always a crime until somebody wrote a law and created that crime. Standing... Three black men standing on the corner of uh, Crenshaw, right? You know right. what I mean? It wasn't a crime until somebody wrote that law and criminalized them. So what ended up happening is over the 40 Just. years, right, 70 million people got swept up in that. 70 million people. One third of black men have a record, right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people with records. So what does that mean, though? What does it mean to have a record? What does it mean to have a criminal record, yeah. right? On face value, it's just a record. But if you look at where it lives at, it lives in four different databases. It's the, the police have a database. It's called the telecommunication system. The courts have a database. The state has a database. And the federal government has a database. And do they all link together or something? Get this. So the two databases that matter in this is the court database and the state database. The court database is for sale. Is for yeah. sale. After 9-11... 
what ended up happening is we lived in a fear-based economy. So all the private companies, all the private landlords start doing background checks. 90% of private companies do background checks. 90% of landlords do background checks. Yeah, and you know what? I remember years ago growing up being evicted quite a bit. Yeah, it, like that never stopped you from kind of getting a, a, your next apartment. Yep. But now even with landlords, they check not just your credit. But they also check your criminal background. Yep, 100%. And it has nothing to do with your ability to rent or pay, right? It has everything mm -hmm. to do with this fear-based economy. And you were saying that 80% of landlords reject people that yep, have a criminal 100%, background. 100%. 100%. So the, the business side of it is consumer reporting agencies, these background check companies, right? It's a billion-dollar industry. Billions of dollars go into taking that data, buying that data from the courts all around the country, and then selling it to all these different people. So your data is for sale. Right. And when you, when somebody says you can run a background check on anyone, it's just that simple. It's just that simple. Or you can just go to the court and look it up for free sometimes. Oh, right? Lord. And then the state has a database. And this state database is a tricky one because it can never be erased. Nothing. It can your your record, once it's in these databases, the telecommunication system that the police have when they pull you over, your stuff pops up. So that when you get pulled over and they run you, that much information pops up on you everything. in the dash? Everything. Everything. Think about George Floyd. When the, they ran George Floyd's name and they showed up, they knew, oh, this brother got a felony. Right. That heightens right. Right, the situation yeah. quickly. That's why they pulling out guns, they holding their gun because they know you a felon. Right? Mm. That can never be erased. The courts... It's tricky. That's when expungement happens in record sealing. Then it shields the record. The state, kind of the same thing. But the federal government, they ain't getting rid of nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And even these four databases, they're never erased. They're just sealed, right? right? The, the middle two, the state and the courts, we can seal it. The federal government, they're not sealing it. The, the police, they're not sealing anything. What does expungement mean? You know when people say, oh, I got my record expunged. So the problem with expu the word expungement, it means something different in every single state. So in, 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 in Texas, right, frankly, expungement means, like, expunction, get rid of it, but no one can, you know, get rid of the record, right? It's for people who um, were arrested, were not convicted, and then, like, only, like, misdemeanors like that can get their record removed. Okay. But everybody else can't, right? Record sealing is right. what people go for because you seal the record – People can't see it. Now, I want to, before I get to the record ceiling part and, 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 and what we've done with that in California, I want to talk about the impacts of this, right? Okay, yes, please. So if you have a record in America, there is something called collateral consequences. This is something that nobody knows about. There are literally 40,000 laws that kick in after you serve your time. So when, you, when people say, I can't, I can't rent, that's one. You right. Have, you have... 39,999 <laughs> yeah. more of things like that that are all around America. And when it affects one person, we're like, oh, okay, well, you know, if you don't want to do the time, don't do the crime. Okay, great. But when it affects 70 million people and when something happens called post-conviction redlining where people can't rent just anywhere, right. so they're aggregated to a certain geographic location and you're having these people that – can't work in healthcare, can't work in insurance, can't work in real estate, can't work in education, can't work in finance. Literally, the growth um, economic engines in a lot of these small American cities are education, mm -hmm. healthcare, and government. Right. Right. How many people are like, I work for this county, I work for the, you know, the school district. These are the economic drivers, and it locks people with records out, and they aggregate them to the same area. And when you go to those areas, what are there? Extractive industries, buy here, pay here loans, right? right like right, bail right, bonds, right. right? Like your your job is your credit. So it's extracting value from communities all around the country. And then they fall into what is called post-conviction poverty, mm -hmm. and they can never climb out. It decreases your lifetime expectancy by 10 years. Yeah. Mental health, um, 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 the uh, your your uh, uh, um, people end up having mental health problems. Uh, six times more likely to have a mental health problem if you have a record, right, than anybody else, right? I mean, the list goes on and on and on, and this is happening in silence. This is happening in silence, and no one is saying that this is a epidemic right now in America. And get this, it's not just happening in America. It's happening in Canada, in the U.K., in Germany, 
all in them countries in Africa. You can't get rid of your record. We have a problem in this world to where redemption is just an ideology and not actual fact, not a value in the society. And in America, we've codified it. And it affects the economy of not only the individual, but the family, the community, and now the state. So much so that America loses $300 billion every single year in lost wages because we don't allow people to work. And look, look I'm not saying don't punish people for knocking somebody over the head. Do what you got to do. But if you serve your time. If you serve your time, that should not pop up when you're trying to take care of your family. I committed a crime 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago. I was 19. 20 years ago. They sent out a uh, uh, a schedule for my kids' uh, summer camp. Field trip, field trip, field trip. We are looking for chaperones. Guess what comes with being a chaperone? A background check. I can't even chaperone my kids' field trip for something I did 20 years ago that was a robbery. That was a robbery. This is the impact we're having on young fathers and young mothers who are literally just trying to take care of their families. And we wonder why people are slipping into mental health. People are on fentanyl. People are doing alcohol and smoking and staying home and have no direction and nothing to do. And, th and there are a lot of people getting out of it. There are a lot of folks like us that can thrive despite of. You know, that can actually go and start a trucking business, that right. can go and work the system and become an entrepreneur or get a good job. But then when they go and try to get TSA, <laughs> Are they oh, go yeah. try to like? Are they go try to like? You know, um, exercise their Second Amendment right because somebody harassing their family and they can't. We can't even protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, so what is the value? What is the value of having California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation if we can't even define rehabilitation as getting your full citizenship back? That's what Time Done is about. That's what we've been able to do in California. Okay, so when is there hope? Because now I'm I'm sitting here like, damn, <laughs> <laughs> be, be, because a lot of times, man. We don't know. And then there's this slippery slope. And and sometimes we don't even find out how bad it is until we're in it. Yep. And one, once we're swimming in that pool, bro, that's when we realize that we can't we can't get a job. We can't, you know, rent a place. We can't we can't travel freely like how we think we're going to travel, you know. And like you say, of course, break the law, get your sentence, do 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 the crime, do the time, so on and so forth. But afterwards, when you say post. There is so much that come with it. And when you hear someone speak about it, you start to really understand, like, bro, like you are going up to the plate without a bat in your hand yeah. at all. You, you're not going to yeah. get on base, damn, let alone hit a home run. So when we talk about expungement and when we when I had a chance to just kind of speak with you briefly, what it, how do we for one, I know that there had to be laws that were changing. It was a hell yeah. of a road. Jay, that you had to go down just to be able to sit here today. Yep. What was that road and, and what were the changes that, that you were looking for and the changes that you were able to make yeah, during your so, organization? Yeah, so um, in 2014, so I, I run Alliance for Safety and Justice. We are, I would say, the most effective public policy organization that passes laws in the country. We've passed over 100 laws in the last 10 years. It's unprecedented. Wow. You don't do that, right? You just don't pass laws after laws. They've passed 1,000 laws to criminalize us. We've passed right. 100 to decriminalize and to ensure that people can get back to true safety, right? In 2014 in California, we passed a law, a, a, a ballot called um, Prop, um, Prop 47 that reduced some felonies to misdemeanors, 1.5 million people were eligible to get their records um, reduced by petitioning. We went to work. We 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 reduced about 400,000 um, people's records, right? Mm -hmm. 400,000 in the span of like three or four years. We built up a robust uh, legal, uh, uh, legal services apparatus, and we built a movement around that. But when we realized California had one of the brokest systems in America, like we they passed laws on top of laws on yeah, top of man. laws on top of laws trying to fix the problem. So we were like, okay, how do we peel back the onion? So, you know, they hired me and they hired the wrong motherfucker because I got to work. Yes, sir. right. I started to like really do my research because I was <laughs> I was in chains. So I was fighting for my freedom. I didn't have I didn't want to do this work because I wanted to make money. I literally was like, yo, I just I was just homeless two years ago. And I was homeless because I couldn't find a job in a house. So you know what? I'm going to dedicate my life to getting free. And then when I get free, I can free everybody else. So we did a bunch of research. We realized that. The expungement laws in California were defunct, and the systems that house the databases, the the telecommunication system, the mm -hmm. court system, the, the, like we could actually change those systems and how they talk to each other. 
everyone told us we were crazy. <laughs> like literally, yeah. people were. I were walk. I was walking into um, rooms full of like legal beagles who I just worked with to um, change some records, and they were like, "Jay, you crazy? You you know you." They'll call them ex-cons. Like, ex-cons right. can't do this, you know? I'm like, yeah, yes, we can. We can actually create a system to where redemption is real in, them, in California and everyone have a pathway to expunge their record. And expunge means record ceiling to where you can get a job and a house, right? We can do that. Everyone told us we were crazy. I'm like, all right, bet. So shout out to Big U and Bear Claw and everybody at Developing Options. We launched a concert at the Greek Theater yeah. on uh, um, uh, October 21st. We didn't have a headliner. Shout out to T.I. He dropped out last minute. We called uh, uh, Big U and Bear Claw. They called. Uh, they called Nip. Nips was in. Nip headline with Ty Dolla right. Sign, Guapale, My Son. Shout out to the brother, My Son. Uh, uh, DJ Yes U R T. DJ Cassidy sold out the Greek Theater. Um, Six thousand people, all formerly incarcerated. And we got on stage. Me and Ingrid Archie. Shout out to my organizing director, Ingrid Archie, and Terrence Stewart, and the whole team. Nathan Pertle got on stage. And I was like, do y'all want to get free? Everyone's like, yeah. I'm like, we don't get free in five years. They're, <laughs> like, remember, they're like, remember, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, man, <laughs> like, every Nipsey back out. That's the way you see it. <laughs> everybody was like, yeah. <laughs> and, and I looked over to uh, um, the woman who founded the organization. Shout out to Lenore Anderson and Robert Rooks. And she was like, her eyes was yeah. big. Like, yo, what are you doing? Yeah, like, what are you doing? They, yeah, don't guarantee nothing <laughs> yeah. like that. So I got to work. You know, I, I I remember the night where it was a particular night where I just talked to some lawyers that I really respected and they were like, there's no way to do this. And, you know, I was like hurt, you know, like, yeah. damn, I, am I never going to get How free? do you not kill it on the vine, though? When, right? when you have so many people that's in position and you know everything is going to be uphill. And when you have some people that really F with you, too, that say, man, this is a lost battle. Like, how do you not kill it on the vine? I thought about. Terrence, I thought about Anthony Dawson, I thought about mm. Kelton, I thought about Ingrid, I thought about Nathan, I thought about everybody who was impacted, I thought about you, I thought about, you know what I mean, Claw, everyone who was like, yo, you really gonna do this? I remember going home that night and I wrote boxes and I, you know, drew up some stuff and it was called Post Sentence Record Matrix and it was what we call Sunsets now mm. and it was basically a five year campaign to pass a set of laws that would free everybody in California after they serve a certain amount of time um, post-conviction. Um, and, you know, it took us five years, and I'm getting emotional, and um, we did it. So mm -hmm. Gavin Newsom, I was there. Gavin Newsom signed the last set of bills that would allow for everyone to get their record changed in California. So what we did was we went to bat, changed the systems, we learned the data systems, AB 1331, Change the data systems. AB 1076 expunged 75% of people's records in California. So if you have a record and you did not go to prison, which is like 6 million people, is right. the, is literally the largest pot of people, your record is automatically expunged. Literally automatically expunged after two years of being crime free. Automatically expunged. That was the work that we did. That was in 2019. You know, and they were like, whoa, this is crazy. 75% of people with records automatically, you know, get their record expunged. But then and I was Is that free. something that they have to do? No. It's not automatic. It's automatic. It just do crime free, just be crime free for two years after you after you get off probation and you're done. Right? And then I wasn't free. Because mm -hmm. I went to prison. Right. And 25% of us was still not free. So we all looking at each other like, yo, what's next? I'm like, well, shit, let's go back. Yeah. Let's write this law. SB 731. And let's make it automatic. They told us, no, you can't do automatic because you got people with murder convictions, people with, you know, assault. So we're like, all right, bet. Let's make a streamlined process. So all you got to do, if you are live in California and you went to prison, all you got to do is sign a piece of paper, right, follow with the court, and the court will expunge your record. Everybody, everybody with a record have access to expungement in California because of work that formerly incarcerated did. Last thing I'll say is this, um, before I give the plug to the event we're doing, <clears throat> The work that we do at its core with Time Done is literally about injecting the value that the system took, extracted from our right. communities. People are going to prison 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old before they even realize their value. They don't even know that they have value yet. We're at a value deficit in our communities. Biggie was telling me a 16-year-old was just murdered. 
16s. That's value extraction. Yes, sir. What we're doing is ex- injecting that value back, saying, hey, not only can you get free, but you can become economically stable and inject value for generations and generations to come. That's what we're, we're in the business of doing, value extraction. So July 15th, mm-hmm. July 15th, time done, developing options, Crenshaw High Gymnasium. If you have a felony conviction and you've been to prison, go to timedone.org right now. The first 100 people that go to timedone.org, click on the expungement clinic, and show up on July 15th at Crenshaw High Gymnasium, we will help you expunge your record. You got to go right now. We only have 100 slots. 100 slots. The first 100 people that go to timedone.org, sign up, we will help you expunge your record on July 15th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And let's that's the it. Let's Get Free Together that's event. Awesome, let's Get Free Together event. Bro, like, and I didn't know that, not that it was so automatic or so easy. And and sometimes when we talk about, like, propositions and new laws and people don't understand, at the top of every year, there's always a gang of new laws that we don't even see. And when we don't see these laws or we don't pay attention to them, bro, we get in a position where... You know, some of sometimes we felt like, oh, we couldn't vote. My vote doesn't count. We we we've we've heard that for many many years. But now, not even knowing that, you know, there's a lot of people that when you think about, oh, criminals, crime, felon, misdemeanor, whatever, some people just automatically hit the box of mm-hmm. they they don't want it. They don't want it. You know, so I'm pretty sure you had to have a lot of different fights with people just saying, you know, you can go in, not even read anything. It just says, do you want one police? Oh yeah. Do you want to say, oh, yeah. yeah. So you had to fight against a lot of that automatic just hitting the ballot. Yep, yep, yeah. Every <laughs> single time we talk about this issue, you know, people call, they call us formerly incarcerated, ex-con. I'm like, no, I'm a person with a record, right. one, right? And it's an old record, two, right? And then three, everybody's proximate now. Everybody's proximate. We built a big-ass wall and on the wall was printed all the 40,000 collateral consequences. And we it was about 70 feet long, 30 feet high. We put it on the side of the Greek. People loved it so much. We took it next year to the state capitol, shut down a whole street, put it right there facing the capitol, and called all the law enforcement agencies and their lobbyists out so we can talk to them about this wall and us trying to knock this wall down. Right. And so the gimmick was it was, you know, during the whole Trump era. And we were like, come see the wall. People were like, what the wall? Y'all building a wall? I'm like, yeah, I just built a wall. They come outside and they're like, what is this? And they're walking up to the penal code sections, the code sections, penal code one, two, three, four, five. You can never adopt a kid. And they're like, what? And people I seen the realization in law enforcement lobbies eyes saying, oh, I know some. Oh, my kid. I had one come up to me and say, my son is going through this. He didn't even realize that his son was going through this. Because listen, you know, 99% of convictions are a result of a plea bargain. And in that plea deal, they do not tell you about the collateral consequences. So all these youngsters is signing off on these plea deals, not realizing that you'll get out of jail free card was attached to a ball and chain for the rest of your your life. life. And so you're like, whoa, I'm out, but I can't find a job because my felony, right? And so this is what, people don't understand is that everybody's proximate and this is not about you know decreasing penalties this is not about right. you know sentencing reform this is literally anti crime public safety work my the question i always ask people is one do you believe in rehabilitation they're like yeah of course you know i said okay well how long does that take how long when will my sentence end When will my sentence end? Five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. I just talked to a cat in Ohio, 60 years old. He calls our our hotline. He's like, hey, I am a plumber. I do plumbing. I am in the union and I cannot rent my own apartment because I set a bush on fire 20 years ago. Wow. 60 years old. Terrence Stewart in Riverside, has a master's degree. He can't even work for the same school that gave him the master's degree. The list goes on and on and on. Tommy Bush in Stockton can never put a apartment in his name, so he's stuck renting on other people's names. Jay Jordan, I can't even rent an apartment. I'm the CEO of one of the largest public safety operations in the country. And we only represent a small percentage of people who've made it out. 
And shout out to all the people that be in my DMs and on the comments on my Instagram that talk about, oh, Jay, I made it. You know, you have to pull yourself up by your bootstrap. For sure. Right. For sure. But the the moment, the moment your, your ass huh. is like Meek Mill and you're thinking you're free and you pop that willy and they come snatch you up. Yes, sir. You realize, still nigga. Yeah. Say it. <laughs> Man, timedone.org. Do we get all the information there? Not just the, the Let's Get Free Together event, but is all the information there as well? Timedone.org. We have chapters in California. In California, we have five chapters LA, Fresno, Stockton, Bay Area, Sacramento. Join a chapter. If you are in Ohio, in Pennsylvania, in Texas, in Michigan, we have chapters in those four states. And what does it mean when you say join a chapter? Man, listen, the first thing we do is we ask you, what do you need? Mm. Do you need to become financially stable? Do you need help with housing? Do you need your record changed? We stabilize people because so many of these movements ask people to activate and get into the streets, and then folks go home and can't pay their bills. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. We say, you know what? How do we inject value in you so you can inject value in the community? You dig what I'm saying? So we help people get economically stable, remove barriers, and then we, pull pa and then we build pathways. So we help you get stable, but then we're going to ask you to do some work to change right, some laws. Right. You know what I mean? So and what about expungement? Like, what, what's the process for that? Like, how long does something like that take? So the part of the story that I didn't say is we pressure test it. You know, people were like, oh, Jay, you're sending people back to court. I'm like, all right, I'll be the first one to do it. So mm -hmm. it's, the day went into effect, July 1st. We didn't do that. It was July 3rd. It was a Monday, right? I was the first one. Me and six others, right, in, in Stockton, we were the first ones to file, pro per. I said, you know what? I don't need no attorney. I'm going to go in there and file myself. It was so hot off the press that the clerk of the court was like, this is illegal. I'm like, no, it's legal. I wrote the law. We oh ran the campaign. Lord. It's legal. You know what I mean? Yo, I remember that. Everyone was like, it, it was a big old thing. And yeah, I'm like, no. Wow. I, I, I had to call the public defender's office and was like, can you tell them this is legal? And they went back and talked to their supervisors and were like, okay. They was reluctantly... Gave me a court date. May 12th, we went to court. May 12th, we went to court. So it took us four months to get a court date. Mm -hmm. Went went into court, and the judge was like, based on the law, I'm going to expunge your record. No, like, you know, give me a story of what right. you're going to do. Based on it was the a law. formality. It was a form the way we wrote it was, if you have been crime-free after parole, you know, then you shall be given this expungement. And who can't get expungement? Sex offenders. Gotcha. That's it. Gotcha. Everybody That's else good. can. And so she said, good, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, have a, I have a kid. So, yeah, yeah like I, I think about that and for sure. Yep. And so from, from – and then what does that look like? What like, does it mean? What, what does it look mean? like before versus what it looked like after? Private landlords, private companies can't see it, right? The only people who can see it is agencies dealing with vulnerable populations. And, and explain that. Right? So if you try like to work at a daycare, yeah. then they're going to – they'll see it. But – you can say, hey, my record expunged. You know, here goes my impact statement. Here goes my references. It's not a blanket ban no more. Um, if you're trying to work in an a elder home yeah. or a nursing home, yeah. they'll, they'll be able to see it. If you're trying to work in education, so trying to become a teacher, they'll be able to what see it. What about employment? Like, so, and, and I mean, like, those are employment things, but just like if you just wanted to work at Walmart or something like that. Private, private companies can't see it. Gotcha. Private what landlords can't see it. Private, yeah. What That's about right. filling that thing out if you've ever been arrested or felon or anything like that? How does that have you ever been convicted of a crime? Or you can something say no. like that. You gotcha. Wait, wait, say that again? Have you ever been convicted of a crime? Right. You can say no. Gotcha. Even if you were convicted? If you've ever been convicted of a crime, you can say no because they're vacating your, your conviction. That's what expungement means in California. 1203.4 mm -hmm. is the legal process that vacates the, um, the, the conviction. So they're vacating the conviction. I didn't know that one. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> hey, dude, yeah. when Jay said it, Big U was like, man, you serious? Yeah. So, so you can say no. Yeah. Oh, nice. You was picking and up his phone was, like, hey, and man. That was, and that was the judge. So we learned this when we went to court on the 12th. The judge the judge told, uh, shout out to Ben Amador, our uh, chapter coordinator in Stockton. He was like, you no longer have to check that box. And he was like, what? Process of 1203.4 vacates the a conviction. So if it says, have you ever been convicted of a felony, you can put no. With no repercussions. Yeah. Damn. Before, you would get caught in a candor trap, right? Which is like, you know. You shaking you, your head real tough yeah, over there, bro. Yeah. Are yeah, you yeah, writing yeah, notes? Yeah, yeah, Let me see this. Yeah, yeah, Are you? Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> ain't no All these this dude ain't never wrote no notes in here. <laughs> never. Uh, hey, dude, uh, everybody in here like, <laughs> yeah, dog, uh, uh, like, oh. Uh, uh. Yeah, it's yeah. real talk, man. Yeah, and so and so this is this is the work. This was the work, right? This was the work to try to craft something again that was rooted in, like you know, the people everybody threw away. Hey, but let me ask you, and, and back to and I, and I and I believe you, but if it says if you've ever been convicted of a felony and you mark no, can something come back and bite you in the ass though? So this is again before it was called the candor trap, mm -hmm. right? Where you were, people were saying no. And then based on you being dishonest, right, they would right. de deny you and say, hey, if you was going to be honest, then we'll. Yeah. But because your, your, your conviction was vacated, right, you can legally say I've never been convicted of a crime, Damn. you know, because your record was expunged. That's the, that's the power of expungement. It doesn't erase the but record. When you were talking about the different, like the different, like not, I, I'll say branches for lack of a better word, it can still show up somewhere. So, but you, you'll still put. Never. Yeah, like, no. no. Okay. So you're no. protected, technically. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. You notice I keep asking about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm glad you asked. So, hey, so listen, so, <laughs> hey, so listen, so. Just asking for a friend. Yeah, getting, <laughs> getting one layer deeper to it, right? Yeah. So there's a federal law called the Fair Credit Reporting Act, mm -hmm. right? This is the law that governs all your uh, credit reports, right? So you have Experian, TransUnion, Equifax. They're governed by the Fair Credit Reporting Act. California has a version, like nine states or something like that, have a version of um, the FICRA, which is ours is called ICRA. Um, and it basically says, like, on your credit report, after seven years or anything dismissed, mm -hmm. you can't right. show up. So right. your record is dismissed when it's, uh, um, when, it's, uh, um, when it's expunged. So you're having a dismissed felony. So you weren't convicted. You, it was dismissed. You dig what I'm saying? Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah so, they're, so they're dismissing your record. That's the, again, that's, that's the... You know the trick to all of Man, this I'm is understanding the law. The work, that you know was, what I mean? If you if it was left up to me, bro, we'd be yeah. fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> like real yeah. talk. With expungement, is it felony only, or is it felony misdemeanor as well? So in California, mm -hmm. you know, you can get anything expunged, okay. right? Um, in other states, again, the laws are different from state to state. So you have to you would want to go to the court and say, hey, this is my record. This is my penal code. You know, uh, can I get it expunged? What I encourage folks to do is look at the several laws that are on the books right now, right? So there's Prop 47, you know, um, there's Prop 64, which is the weed cases. Mm. Um, there is 17B reductions, which, you know, applies to certain felonies where you can get them reduced to misdemeanors. Um, this is, you know, more of the, like, the, um, you know, non-non-nons, right? Uh, you can get those, you know, reduced to misdemeanors. And if you have a mm. misdemeanor conviction, then it's a lot easier to navigate through the collateral consequences than the felony conviction. And so depending on the type of crime, depending on right. the length, depending on if you have different crimes in proximity. So it's not a one size fits yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, you would have to gotcha. go. And this is what we were talking about in terms of like layering on laws to try to fix laws. If it was so convoluted that we were like, let's just make an expungement law. And so like I encourage folks to go and um, look at what is called a CR 180. Look, it's a CR-180. You can go to your court website or type in a CR-180, Google CR-180. A form will pop up. Mm -hmm. Read that form. And in that form, it'll tell you everything that is available to you as a person with a record, right? And Big, you were just speaking on also, man, like when when it comes to like the, the sanctions, the gang injunctions and the scare cards. And, and, and sometimes we don't even know that they're building up something on us when they ask, you know, for your name, identifying tattoos, and they put you in this file. Do you see certain things with that, too, when it comes to, like, different injunctions and sanctions of that nature? Cal Gangs is gone now. They passed the law. A lot of youngsters don't know that. Okay. That um, when you go to court, there's, they can't really use gang files against you no more because uh -huh. they're not supposed to label kids as gangs. One of the reasons was because they could put you in the gang, but they don't have a classified way to say when you out, out. yeah, or if you still active oh. or what it is. So, and then they had them where they was going to just labeling me riding in the car with Big Boy. He could be a gang member, yeah. right? And, and they were just classifying pe people as gang members. And so, and really, so it was that's a gone broken now. System that's gone now. Dynamite. So that's the reason go. why in California they're resentencing a lot of people who are coming back down to be resentenced. So 
A lot of your homeboys that you made mad, didn't send no money to. They coming home. They coming home. They coming home. What up, Mike? All right, <laughs> man. Go. Thank you for the work, bro. Thank you for the work, man. And I, and I, and I encourage everyone, if if need be, timedone.org. you see all the information. Don't forget, let's get free together. The event that's going down in Expungement Clinic that's going down at Crenshaw High School Gymnasium, July 15th, 10 a.m. I see right that's here awesome, to, uh, to 4 p.m. I saw 4.30 as well. But make sure you guys log in. Y'all check that out. Jay, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, man, too, man. Thank you, brother. And and, and trust me, he, he, you on there already? <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate your time, bro. Thank you so much, Big U. I guess we'll go do some hapkido or something yeah. after we get out of here. No, we I, have a football tournament. What's we happening? Have a, we have a football camp on that same day for little kids. Oh, really? Five at, to at, fourteen at, at, at Crenshaw as well. At Crenshaw, yeah. And what time is what time is it's that? It's gonna be from um, eleven. Till uh, six. Alrighty. So so yeah, we're grabbing the babies young. Just too. Drop the babies off at the yeah, camp man. on the football field and go get a spot. And, and go get yeah, awesome. and let's go get free together. Yes. Sir. And what's the football camp? The age you said five to fourteen? Five to fourteen. It's gonna be we got most of the chargers coming out. Cause, you and know, why? My son, because my and, son just got drafted on, to the Chargers. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Say that then. Oh. You know, that's beautiful, man. Yes, yeah. He's staying at the house. Yes, at the house, man. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, it's a trip. When we see NFL dreams, we like, man, you, you want it, but you got it. And he at the house. At the house. From man. Crenshaw High School. Ooh. Went to Crenshaw High School. Graduated from Crenshaw High School. Went to Reno. And now he's in the pros. I heard that, Give him the name, man. Dayon Henley. Man. There you go. Number zero. Number, Number zero. zero. And he got Number the charge. zero, yes. man. They just, they just gave the zeros in to the NFL, and he yeah, popped man. the zero, bro. So sick. Man, I can't wait to see my little nephew, man. I, yeah. I remember just him growing up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I remember at one two point I remember at one point you he was like, Uncle Big, I don't think I want this. I said, stay in it, you little motherfucker. Remember? Remember I, grabbed him, I said, stay in it, man. He was like, I don't know. I was like, stay in it, man. That was really true. He didn't want to quit. Yeah, 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 yeah. People think I'm making it up. I was very instrumental on this dude's career, man. So yeah, so when you have a sweet or whatever, man, invite. <laughs> invite on down, man. And I like more of a uh, a mild wing myself. You know what I'm saying? When we when we in your suite hanging out. Definitely. But thank you, brothers, for coming in, man. Yeah, man. And thank you for enlightening us, man. And, sure. and my next thing, you gotta let me know what's the next clinic because I want my teeth to be like yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He 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 helping people there with expungement. But he showed and tell me where I can go get these beautiful <laughs> teeth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he got me over here talking like this and shit. Oh, yeah. So talk Damn to him about his punch. <laughs> Hell yeah, this motherfucker teeth. Right as a motherfucker, huh? It was the dental clinic guy. Yeah. I was, he was like, man, what we, what we did, man, we got 45 dentists together from here, uh, New York, even, even across different countries, man. And we put together an American Dental Association. Not the one that you know about, big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, man. And we just do, you know, all kind of just different care, man. So that's the next thing. Yeah, that's, that's the next thing. thing. So nice email me on that. Got you, got you, got you. <laughs> all right now, man. Thank you so much. Jay Jordan in the neighborhood. Once again, time done. The Alliance for Safety and Justice. Appreciate you. Y'all stick around. Big Boy's Neighborhood. Hey,